Um, so how exactly is data used in some of the challenges or the problems in, in trust and safety? So within trust and safety, there are a bunch of uh, issues that uh, at large companies face. So maybe it's understanding how the fraud happened. You try to moderate the content so that, you know, there was a very big issue a couple of months back. I mean, still it exists about fake news. So that's something that lies within the trust and safety. Uh, then you need to maintain, uh, make sure that your quality of everything is fine. You know, like whatever my system is in place, my product settings that are there, it doesn't allow uh, an abuser to hack my account very easily. And then there are a bunch of things that you need to make sure that you follow a policy. So, for example, some countries have specific policies for data storages and how a product is actually built. So you need to make sure that you follow the policies that that country has in place. And uh, for everything, you need to make sure that everything is, is done at scale because that's how a product company works. It's, it caters to so many users that you need to make sure that all the users are lying within that bucket whenever you launch any of uh, the above mentioned uh, you know, techniques in order to like solve the abuse for it. Essentially, what happens is you use data to understand if a fraud has occurred, if there's a payment fraud that has occurred, for example, or an account has been hijacked, or you look at different things in terms of how do you track faking news. So WhatsApp had, I think, come up a couple of years back with this uh, concept of forwarded. So every time you keep sending a lot of messages, it keep, it has the word forwarded. So that's something that the trust and safety team within WhatsApp would have come up with in order to maintain that content moderation. Tell us 